Let's turn to a focus group that CNN conducted, Gary Tuckman, in Allentown, Pennsylvania, with undecided voters. They asked her here to grade the speech, give it an A, give it a B, etc. This is how they responded, and I just think it's telling because I did not like that speech. <laughs> it was overly militaristic. It was focused on criminalization and prosecution and border security. I mean, it's a centrist r center, right? In many ways, some of the focus on that stuff, the abortion piece and um, other elements of it were good, but she's trying to look tough. She doesn't want to be tagged as a soft woman or as too liberal, and that was clearly the tactic. Walls can be soft and talk about policy and family, and she can come out and look tough. And um, by the way, not dissimilar from Biden being the more conservative figure and her being perceived as more liberal as his VP, although I think there are there are differences here and improvements. Um, but the, the, the reality is, is that this focus group reacted really positively. First thing I want to ask you, I want you to grade the speech. OK, A is excellent, B above average, C average, D below average. We all know what F is. Let's start with you. How do you grade the speech? I gave her a B plus. B. B plus. A. B plus. A. A. C. C. So mostly A's and B's with one C. I want to ask you why you made the decision you made. First of all, we start with Scott, who is the president of the UAW local here in the Lehigh Valley. Scott, why, what grade did you give it again? A B, B plus. plus. How come? Uh, I gave her the, the high grade because I thought she looked very confident. I liked how she spoke from her heart. I liked her message of unity and the division that we have in America. I like her fight for uh, the middle class and families. Uh, the reason I didn't give her an A was I thought she needed to go into a little more detail on some of her plans okay. of how she would, you know, do some of the things that she envisioned. Okay, Lindsay, you're in sales. You're the person who wasn't sure she was going to vote for anybody because you don't like either of these two candidates. I'll ask you more about that in a minute, but first, what grade did you give the speech? I gave it a B. How come? I thought it was a good speech. I mean, she did what she was supposed to do. I okay. like that she was a, talked about her upbringing, made it feel a little more like personal. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a good speech. Okay, Andy, you're also with the UAW. You yes. make cars and trucks for us Americans, so thank you for that, along with the rest of you. Your grade again was? B plus. And how come B plus? Um, I liked her plan for the middle class. Like I'm, my, my wife was a nurse. I'm an auto worker. I'm as middle class as you can get. Uh, I just felt like she, she go a little more in depth. But I guess I, I understand you can't really go in, as in depth in these speeches. But a little, a little bit more would have been like, nice. Okay, Donna is your mother. Yes. And Donna's a retired dental hygienist. Donna, what grade did you give it again? I gave her an A. And how come an A? Because she hit all the points that I wanted to know about. I wanted to know more about her, her economic economic uh, policies, uh, her foreign policy. I know she couldn't go into depth about, about that, but I mean, I felt that she looked very presidential. She sounded presidential, and uh, I think she's going to be a unifier. Yeah, by the way, going into tonight, Andy was 60-40 with Kamala Harris. Yes. You were 50-50, which is interesting. We'll talk more about that in a second. Patrick, also with the UAW, the way you gave it again? A B plus. How come B plus? Well, she was very confident in what she was saying. She, uh, she showed leadership ability and understanding of the topics at hand. But again, she didn't go in depth. I did like what she said about what she going to try to do for the middle class about a tax break for us, which will be very nice, but still a little bit more information on some of the things that she's planning on doing. Sean, also with the UAW, the grade you gave it again? I gave her an A. How come? Uh, I was looking for policy information. Uh, I really wanted to see some substantive policy information. I thought she did give enough. I like what she gave on military, what she wants to do for our veterans, and with border control. I just think that she has a lot of good ideas, and she's very well-spoken. I think she was very professional. Sabrina, is your so those were the reasonings uh, given here a lot. Of, I mean, it's hard for us to understand. A anybody listening to this or watching this, you're very engaged in politics for the most part. Like, I'm very engaged in politics. I can't imagine being undecided on this at all, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's not 
it's difficult, I think, for us to get into some of that in, in that mindset when you're more politically engaged. Um, they seem to have a positive reaction to this. Uh, you know, Sam and I were chatting about this a little bit this morning. I know he's on vacation, but that's a case in point. We're obsessed with this stuff, right? And we care more about moving the country forward in a progressive direction. And having a negative reaction to that speech doesn't necessarily mean that undecided voters are going to have a reaction so they gave their grades and then cnn follows up at the end and asks them who they're going to vote for again there are seven members uh, of this focus group or eight i think i'm not exactly sure eight um and he goes through and asks if this has changed their mind we'll see what they say like i said none of you were ready to make a commitment to any candidate in november Please raise your hand right now if you're now ready to make a commitment after today. Wow. I'm just kind of surprised by that. We, we haven't rehearsed this. I'm going to make that very clear. <laughs> we'll let that this. Seven of you are now ready. Scott? Yes, I'm, I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris. Andy? Yeah, Kamala Harris, yes. Donna? Yes, I'm voting for her also. Sean? Um, Sean? Yes, uh, Kamala. Sabrina? Kamala. Patrick? Kamala. Brian? Trump. Trump. And finally, Lindsay? Still probably not voting. <laughs> Still probably you don't like either of them? Nope. Okay. What led to you all making a decision? Was it that decisive of an evening, Scott? Uh, yeah, I, I really, as I said before, I really liked her confidence. She's really seemed presidential. She seemed very confident. Like I said, she, she spoke from her heart. I liked how she filled in on her background, that she struggled, her, her mother struggled, All right. middle class family. And Donna, you were 50-50 yeah. going into the evening. What made you make a decision? Well, I've, I've been doing research since she was you know, the nominee, and uh, I like what I'm reading. And here I've been watching the convention, and, and her speech was just, you know, that just sold me. And Brian, you decided on Trump. What, what about tonight? Because we, when we met last week, you were undecided. undecided. What about tonight made you decide you were going to vote for Trump? Um, I, you know, her, her speech was great. I like how she went into personal history again. Um, I, it was just not moving for me. But it made you think that Trump's a better candidate than her. He's, he, he's here for it. He's a little bit more aggressive. She's aggressive in her way, but I think she'll be aggressive in the next term. So Trump over Harris for you, Harris over Trump for most of you. What I will tell you, 75 days now. Okay, so look, take with that what you will. It's a CNN focus group. You can't run to the bank with it. But it is interesting um, and notable. You saw like that guy who's now, who gave it an A <laughs> and is voting for her uh, at the top is was particularly pleased about the border thing and it's like dude you're in pennsylvania i mean i don't know what to tell you i don't know what to say about that right that the famous border bo famous border state pennsylvania. right right it's 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 not exactly what i would think would be at the top of the top of the uh, priority list there but um just a sobering reminder of what a general election constitutes and i think we've been in such a, a crazy period of upheaval and of agony about gaza and of that short kind of period where harris was rolling out some of the more progressive things for the base solidifying that quite um strategically uh and there's a question mark about the sincerity right but then moving to the convention and announcing herself on the national stage as a much different I think, candidate than she'd been campaigning when she goes to her stops and talks about the child tax credit or goes to the UAW and speaks about collective bargaining and those kinds of things. I mean, did she mention union? She did a little bit, but it certainly wasn't the focus. The focus was, I'm commander in chief. I'm tough enough to do the job. I'll crack down on the border. I'll crack down on dictators. I'll be a strong person on the, on the international stage. And that's what a lot of voters want they want a commander-in-chief they want and that was part of what hurt biden that's the thing pe people you know still underplay about biden is that it wasn't the democrats right it was about 
this very baseline desire from voters, which is like, I want a guy who's going to do the job, who's competent. And he didn't pass the smell test, given the fact that he was unable to communicate during that debate and had a bit of a breakdown um, and because of his age. And those concerns persisted. It's about doing the job right for some of these voters and for that focus group at the very least they seem to think that she could hey folks don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show we do it every day at 12 p.m eastern for about two and a half hours we even take phone calls you should check that out